um, hello everyone uh, so today i'll be talking about our work safenet the unreasonable effectiveness of ensembles in private collaborative learning this is a joint work done with my advisor alina and our collaborator from google matthew so the roadmap is as follows uh, i'll first talk about the necessary uh, background to understand our project second is the safenet framework that we introduce in our work and finally the necessary evaluation to wrap it all up so let's start with uh, what is multi party computation or mpc it is where a set of parties or servers uh, together uh, want to compute a joint function on their private inputs so what is the uh, goal of this mpc uh, the goals are twofold first is correctness that the parties actually correctly evaluate this function output and second is privacy that parties learn no additional information beyond the function output during the execution of the protocol so this uh, occurs in the presence of an adversary who is allowed to corrupt at most t out of n servers in the mpc and uh, these corrupted servers can behave one of two ways one is the semi honest uh, corruption where the corrupted servers follow the protocol uh, as designed but they try to derive some additional information from the protocol and second is the malicious behavior where they can arbitrarily deviate from the protocol so how does mpc fit into the paradigm of privacy preserving machine learning so here you have a set of data owners uh, with their private data sets and they want to train a machine learning model on their combined data sets so in this case the goals are as follows first is correctness that the mpc indeed trains this model correctly and second is privacy that nothing about the individual data sets is revealed during the training procedure inside the mpc so on a very high level the training steps are as follows the uh, data owners for secret share their data sets to this mpc uh, such that if any t servers come together to reconstruct the data they won't be able to do it and uh, secondly you usually use an off the shelf training uh, mpc framework to train this model m uh, some common mpc train uh, training frameworks in the literature you'll see is uh, there is a 2 pc framework called secure ml which is pretty famous you can find a uh, 3 pc frameworks also such as aby3 secure nn falcon and there are certain ones for 4 pc as well now let's talk about the adversarial capability in ppml uh, so here we see is that the adversary is able to corrupt servers as well as data owners however the power uh, is disparate here uh, first when it corrupts the servers the corrupted servers can behave arbitrarily uh they can do uh they can either behave semi honest or maliciously but however when the adversary corrupts the data owners uh the adversary is not allowed to tamper with the data that these corrupted owners have so what we question is uh, what we challenge this threat model and uh, figure out what if the adversary was actually able to manipulate the uh, data sets of these corrupted owners so as soon as you ask this question you open doors to the data poisoning uh, area in adversarial ml literature so where the particular objective is to manipulate the training data to get certain uh, desired objective uh, uh, the more common types of attacks you'll see in this literature is uh, backdoor attacks where you try to add a backdoor pattern to uh, induce misclassification on backdoor samples the second type of attack is targeted attacks where you want to change the model prediction on some specific test samples so now we uh, we introduce a new poisoning aware threat model here where the uh, adversary can not only corrupt the servers but can also poison the data owners in this case so how do the goals change in this new threat model uh so the correctness and privacy goal remains the same from the previous threat model however we introduce a new uh, goal into the picture it's mainly where the trained model uh, from the mpc should be able to certifiably give you correct prediction on new samples with high probability uh so given these goals uh, how do we go about tackling it first thing is that there is no existing defense for the current threat model 
so the naturally we come up to the question of what if we pick the state of the art defenses from the data poisoning literature and stick it into the MPC framework and see what happens. So we dig a little deeper into these poisoning defenses and observe that uh, that certain defenses are attack specific. What I mean by that is uh, certain defenses are built to mitigate a specific type of attack, say backdoor attack or a targeted attack. Um, there are more defenses that even are, mo are uh, model specific defenses. That is, they actually work for a specific type of model architecture and a specific type of uh, data modality, such as, say, image data sets. And uh, these kind of approach approaches tend to fail when you change the data modality or architecture. So, and uh, finally, uh, more importantly, when you, these defenses on their own are pretty expensive. And if you stick them inside the MPC, it becomes even more expensive. So the question is, uh, how do we go about exploiting this new poisoning aware threat model to our advantage and build a stronger and efficient defense in this case? So the uh, so that's where we come up with our SafeNet framework. So before we dive deeper into SafeNet framework, we'll look at some insights that we observed during this. So the first thing is uh, what you'll observe is the adversary is able to control a small fraction of the data owners. So we ask uh, and the uh, looking at these data sets, uh, we ask ourselves the question: How about uh, what if we do ensembling in this case? So ensemblings in machine learning is a very well-known technique where what you do is given a data set, you create subsets and you train models on these subsets, followed by you combine them together to create an ensemble. But it's primarily done, to, done in ML to improve generalization by reducing variance uh, for the error. However, what we want to do is not only improve generalization, but we also want to uh, get poisoning robustness here. So what we can do is instead of combining all the data sets together uh, in the MPC and then creating subsets to train models, we instead directly train the models on the data partition from each owner. And this is how we create the ensemble instead of combining. So what are the advantages of doing it this way is first, the majority of the models in the ensemble will be clean. And secondly, you can make the training uh, phase inside the MPC much cheaper because now the mod, uh, the data owner can train the model uh, itself and uh, submit that to the MPC instead of MPC training the uh, model for him. So uh, going a little bit deeper into the training phase, uh, each uh, model owner, uh, sorry, each data owner will start with, will separate out a validation data set and then train a model on the remaining of its training data. Uh, then each owner secret shares both the validation data set and the model uh, to the MPC. In the MPC, you start by collecting the validation data set from all the owners and creating a global validation data set. Next, you, then you uh, compute the validation accuracy of each model uh, with respect to the global validation set. And uh, you filter the models if they are below a certain filtering threshold. Uh, this threshold is usually uh, pre-agreed by the data owners before we start this training procedure. And it's mainly used to remove any uh, bad performing models. <coughs> and once you have crossed the filtering threshold, this is where you create the ensemble. So how does the, given the training phase, how does the inference phase look like? Uh, it is pretty standard where given a client query uh, to the MPC, uh, each model in the ensemble will uh, give a pre model prediction, followed by you do a majority voting to get the final prediction here. Now, given both the training and testing phase, uh, we check how does it perform in practice. So we test our approach on five different data sets. Uh, we test our approach on five different model architectures going from a simple logistic regression model to a complicated model as ResNet 50. Uh, we try on variants of data poisoning attacks for backdoor and targeted. Uh, we, uh, we test on three different MPC frameworks and we have uh, five different evaluation metrics on which we test. The first two metrics come from the MPC side of things where you have a training time that is 
how much time do you need to train this model inside the MPC? Communication complexity is how much, how many messages or the amount of information that needs to be exchanged between the server during the training procedure. The last three are from the ML side where you have the test accuracy. That is uh, what is the accuracy of the final trained model? Uh, second is the, uh, what is the success of the attacker uh, in the presence of static corruption? So static corruption is where the ad adversary chooses which owners to poison and which servers to poison in the beginning of the training phase and then that's fixed. And uh, then we also finally test for uh, robustness against worst case adversary where for each test point that it wants to misclassify, the adversary can dynamically choose which owners to which owners to poison and which servers to corrupt. So this more or less uh, try, uh, captures the certified prediction against poisoning. So neuro, uh, I show one such uh, evaluation here where we test on one layer neural network with 10 hidden nodes uh, for both targeted and backdoor attacks. And in the presence of 20, we have 20 data owners participating here. So for the first two metrics, we observe, say for three PC framework, we observe that our training phase is 15 times faster and is 6.3 times less, requires less communication. As uh, this is, again, just to emphasize that this primarily happens because we can train the models uh, locally before submitting it to the MPC. You'll see similar improvements even for four PC framework here. Uh, what happens in terms of attack success? So if you, the traditional framework uh, immediately breaks down when you introduce one poisoned owner here, whereas SafeNet is able to tolerate up to nine out of 20 poisoned owners in this case. And uh, in even in terms of worst case adversary, we see that uh, SafeNet holds well, where it's pretty much resilient up to nine out of 20 owners for, the, uh, for back, both backdoor and targeted attacks. But I'd also like to uh, bring forth the drawbacks that is there for uh, our framework. First is there is an overhead in inference phase. Naturally, now that you have an ensemble instead of a single model, you are likely to have more communication uh, in the inference phase. Secondly is distribution similarity that the data owners, what if the distribution among the data owners is non-IID? So we try to, uh, create non-identical uh, non behavior among the data owners. And what we observe is that SafeNet actually tends to work for a large range of alpha values here, so, but it uh, tends to break down when the non-ID behavior is at its extreme. However, on the right, what you'll see is SafeNet accuracy also goes down as uh, the non-ID nature increases. But that's a good thing for us because what you can do is you can initially test the SafeNet framework in the beginning, check the validation accuracy. If you think the validation accuracy is too low, then you can uh, remove the SafeNet framework from it and go back to your traditional training. And because as I showed in the previous slide that the training was so fast that it doesn't uh, create so much overhead in the training procedure. So we have uh, more results in our uh, paper as well, out of which some of them which are uh, pretty interesting to me is, uh, the analysis that we do for the uh, for our framework and the security definitions and proofs that we have there. Given that we combine two threat models together, we need to make sure that it works both in both paradigms. Next, uh, we have also an extension to transfer learning scenario where we are actually able to uh, where we are able to remove one of the limitations of the inference overhead that we have there. And thirdly, we also show support for differential privacy using techniques similar to Part A. So in conclusion, uh, we introduced an MPC security definition for privacy preserving machine learning that uh, captures the presence of data poisoning attacks. Second, we designed, a, uh, designed our framework that exploited this threat model to provide some uh, certified po poisoning robustness. We also, we also have some theoretical analysis and proofs for our framework. And finally, we empirically also demonstrated the uh, SafeNet's high resilience against these attacks. Uh, thank you.